All right, good evening. So uh, tonight we're going to talk about a recommendation from the administration that we also reviewed at the Finance Committee meeting about how to move forward with the Capital Improvement Plan. The agenda for this presentation is a little bit of background on how we got to where we are now. Uh, then I will turn it over to Mr. Pate, our Supervisor of Buildings and Grounds, to talk about uh, where we've prioritized, we think the highest need areas are in the Capital Improvement Plan, and then Ms. Lenhart, our School Business Administrator, will talk about financing options, and then we'll wrap it up and take questions and, and have discussion. It's always good to start with the mission of the district. It's our responsibility to ensure that the facilities we're providing to our students and staff match the mission of the district. If we don't have a healthy and safe environment, our students can't be engaged, supported, and challenged. Uh, we have a long history in Warren Township of this board prioritizing preventative maintenance, making sure the facilities are in tip-top condition. Uh, as Mrs. Lenhart likes to say, we don't have cathedrals and uh, all kinds of fancy facilities, but our facilities are maintained exceptionally well. They are clean. We get comments on that every time somebody visits the district for sure. Capital planning, like we've been talking about, is required by the state. We are, we are required to identify over a five-year period what are the facility needs and what kind of a plan do we have to make sure that we're providing for them. As mentioned earlier, uh, our maintenance staff do a great job, but there are things that come up that have to be addressed uh, on an ongoing basis. Process, to back up a little bit to where we started. Beginning in the summer of 2016, since that time, we've had the luxury of having professional recommendations from both USA Architects and Perret Samjin Architects. Those are the two architects of record in the last two years in the district. We've had, in some ways, I would say, the benefit of having two different buildings and ground supervisors. Mr. Triplehorn gave us recommendations before he retired. Mr. Pate has given his recommendations as well. At the Finance Committee, we've talked about the Capital Improvement Plan nearly monthly in that time period. Uh, we've come to the full board with presentations from both architectural firms and all of that feedback has been taken into consideration to get to where we are tonight, to make some recommendations about where we should start and how we should pay for it moving forward. And in order to take that giant list and break it down into manageable pieces, not only financially, but also from a priority standpoint, we established some guiding beliefs. First, we should be thinking about our health and safety first. So what are the critical systems that if we don't keep them in tip-top condition are going to cause us problems? Actually, last week when Safe Havens was in the district, Chris Dorn uh, was able to stop in, just it randomly worked out that he was in a leadership team meeting as we did a, a dry run of this presentation. And he was there to hear the discussion about how we prioritize. And he, uh, in his comments afterwards, co talked about how if you don't do things like make sure your HVAC system are working properly, people start making decisions that compromise all of your best laid plans for health and safety. For example, when a teacher is in a classroom with a, a unit ventilator that's not working, they might prop open a door or a window and suddenly the security system that was in place isn't working the way it's supposed to because people are finding shortcuts to make their classroom more comfortable, which I thought was an interesting way to think about health and safety beyond just things like security vestibules and that sort of thing. We want to maintain the district's preventative maintenance record and make sure that we are passing along the facilities the way they've been passed along to us and plan conservatively. The dollars you'll see in the, in the next slides are the highest estimates we've received from any architect. We would love it and we expect that the projects would come in somewhere lower. We have low and high estimates in the capital plan. We went with only the highest numbers because we would much rather plan for that scenario and have money left over for other things than the other way around. With that, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Pate to walk us through the priorities. Maybe you need to take this as well. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Dr. Mingle. Um, as mentioned, we have done multiple assessments of the district, and the district has done a fantastic job in securing the exterior of the buildings with roof replacements uh, that started with the middle school in 2003 and then continued through all the rest of the schools with then multiple window replacements and building envelope work. This past work has provided protection for our schools by preventing moisture and air infiltration. The projects listed here as priorities contain some windows and roofs 
that are in need of replacement, and then the beginnings of replacing and upgrading some HVAC work. So now I'm going to go into some more detail on the next slides. So in prior years, windows have been replaced in the district at Mount Horeb, uh, Middle School, and Central School. They've all had partial window replacements over the past five years. So in looking at the remaining buildings that we have and the remaining windows based on age and their current condition, uh, the recommendation here is to replace the remaining original windows to the building at Central School. Being able to replace all heating components in a building would be ideal. But the recommendation here is to work on replacing boilers and pumps. Uh, the best way I can describe this is your boilers and your pumps are the heart of your building. Um, by, if we lose those boilers and pumps, we could end up losing partial or all heating in a building, which would reduce our class, classroom comfort. And in determining which buildings to prioritize, an analysis was done on boiler repair expenses. And the outcome of this analysis was that Warren Middle School, Angelo Tommaso, and Mount Horb have become our recommendation for boiler and pump replacements. So continuing on for the necessity of building comfort, you can see here we have HVAC upgrades for Angelo Tommaso and Central School. It has been identified in my time here that we have three areas of three different buildings that are in need of air conditioning, uh, where Without it, we have temperatures that are encroaching on our high limit of our temperature management plan. Woodland School Partial Building HVAC upgrade was approved this past March, so that's the first school. Uh, the other two schools are here, as you have ALT and Central School. And if you think back to my second slide, with the windows at Central School, those are the windows in the same area that we're speaking of here for the HVAC replacement. So this will allow us to not be throwing heat and air conditioning right out the windows because we'll have upgraded windows in that area of the buildings. So the last item that's recommended for priority is Warren Middle School, a partial roof replacement here. So after I've walked all the roofs and we've had our architect of record do roof observations that I've reviewed, the, the only areas I can see that need roof replacement over the next five years would be here at the middle school. So it's rooms 2A, B, and C. Uh, their roof is original from 1997. And the eighth grade section of the building, that roof is original from 2001. And roofing that was installed in that time period uh, had usually a 15 year, sometimes a 20 year warranty, which puts us already beyond or very close to being beyond the life expectancy of the roof. Um, the recommendation is to replace these roofs before we end up with visible leaks into the building. Because if we wait until the water starts dripping into the building, the repair costs end up costing more when we go for the roof replacement. And drips in the building could lead to falling ceiling tiles, uh, slips and falls, or even mold. And these are things we want to try and avoid. So recapping here, these, these again are the, the list of priorities we have. Um, not completing these projects that we have here, as they're all reaching the end of their life expectancy, or have, has the potential to increase our annual ma maintenance costs. Uh, it also has the potential to provide unhealthy environment for our students and staff. And it could cause students to miss days of schools because of failures. Now, if money was no object, and we had lots of money, here is a list of the items that should be completed over the next five years if we had lots and lots of money. This is not in any priority order, but can be prioritized down the road uh, as our capital improvement plan would continue to live and breathe and grow. You'll notice that items on the list include continued HVAC replacements continued window replacement, as well as some safety and security issues with fire alarm upgrades and security vestibules. But since we do not have an unlimited amount of money, I'm now going to turn the presentation over to Mrs. Lenhart to discuss some financing analysis. Okay, so I just want to go back to this slide one more moment and call your attention to that the first three categories of project work there equals 5.3. So those three categories actually align to six different building projects. And then if you add the fourth category, that adds a seventh project. So the first three are 5.3 million. You add the roof and you're up to 6.4. Okay, what are the options for tackling this? 
The first one is pay as you go, and that's the one that districts generally do on an ongoing basis. As project needs arise to the top, the districts cap their capital reserve and they pay for the project. It's 100% locally funded. You have to have all of the money, you, and you, um, the costs do continue to rise as the projects get pushed out further to the future. What's another option? Short-term referendum. What is a referendum? A referendum is going out to the voters of the Warren Township School District, well, the Warren Township Municipality, and asking for approval to incur debt. That debt can either be short-term, traditionally one year, or long-term, can be anywhere from 5, 10, or 15 years. So in the short term, you are selling a note, and that's a one-year liability. It's a simplified process. And traditionally, a bank purchases the note. There is no Fund 40 tax levy that comes out of that process if you're able to marry your capital reserve with state debt service, which we'll speak about in the next slide. A, a larger approach is long-term referendum where you would sell bonds. This district has done that in the past. We currently have no debt at this time, but we have in the past. We just retired it in spring of 16. Um, but then there is the taxpayers carry that tax levy debt service throughout the term of the indebtedness. Okay, what are the potential timelines for what we just discussed? So right now the Woodland School HVAC upgrade has already been board approved. Is, the work is going to be begun, begun this summer, which actually this summer is 1819. What about the other projects? If you remember, we talked about the first three categories of projects equals six individual projects equals 5.3 million. For a benchmark, the district capital reserve deposit, it's anticipated that the balance as of June 30th of this year will be 5.1 million. Those projects, as we just mentioned, as we just mentioned, are 5.3 million. But it's a reasonable expectation that the district will continue to make the deposits in each subsequent June. In addition, the 1819 budget has a $100,000 deposit to capital reserve. So although those projects equal 5.3, and I just mentioned that the capital reserve is going to be about 5.1, it's projected that the district will be okay. You also don't want to wipe out your capital reserve, right? Something happens, you want to have money behind you. But it's anticipated that this approach should be a, a reasonable projection that the district would be able to do those six projects and still have some capital reserve but the roof has fallen off the, the map, right? We haven't addressed the roof. And the district has paid for all of these costs at 100%. It's utilized only its own money. What's the second approach? A second approach is the short-term debt, which we just discussed. It's a referendum. The voters of Warren Township School District would have to approve the referendum. But what would happen here is that we would possibly get some state aid. I'll talk about that in a minute, okay? But now you might be able to talk about the fourth category. Remember four category seven projects? So the cost of the work goes from 5.3 million to 6.4. But when I get to the next screen, you'll see what really happens in the end. The long-term referendum where you're selling bonds is more complicated and we really can't quantify the cost because we really haven't gotten there yet. It would totally be dependent on the scope of the projects that would be included in the referendum. And that would incur an additional tax levy on the residents of Warren Township. Okay, so let's go back. We talked about the 5.3, right? There are no additional fees. You're paying for it as it goes. The district pays 5.3. You get your six projects over a couple of years. What about the short-term referendum? Remember, you've added the roof. So now your 5.3 has become 6.4 million. But the state will help. The state will help with what they call debt service aid. If you read about it in statute, it'll tell you it's 40%. But the reality is that they fund it at 85% of 40%. So it's 34%. So if you ever hear somebody say 40%, that's not really what it nets to. So now you're 6.4. I realize the math doesn't work. It's 2.1 and not 4.5. But that is just the math, the way the rounding went. But now you're $6.4 million of projects believe it or not, are calling this costing the district 4.5. You're $800,000 less, and you've gotten the middle school roof. It is dependent on voter approval. 
Again, we really can't quantify the long-term referendum because that would really be dependent on the scope of the project. The one thing I should point out also is that there are additional fees for the short-term referendum, estimated to be about 175000 The lion's share of that is the one year's interest on the note. So if, if you're, you're, you're selling a note and they're estimating about 2.75% interest, so you sell the note in July and the following July you have to pay it off and you've received the money from the note, but now you have to pay the interest to what's assumed to be the bank. So when we met with the Finance Committee last week, they asked us to put together a potential timeline of what it would look like if we wanted to talk about uh, a referendum. Obviously, the long-term referendum would need a lot more work if that was the direction the board wanted to go. But if our goal was to look at a short-term referendum, uh, this is the timeline we'd be looking at. We're at May 7th with our presentation. Uh, if we work backwards from when we would want the work to begin, which is July 2019, Based on the information of what has to go to the Department of Education for approval, the amount of time our architectural firm would need for upfront costs, our financial advisor's recommendations, we're really looking at a process that has to happen very quickly. So in order to have the, uh, a referendum vote in January of 2019, which is the latest our architects would be comfortable with for a summer of 2019 project uh, start, we would need to have the information to the state in July of this year. So as we keep backing up, it's a long process. There's a lot of work to be done to develop all the plans for all those projects, get approval from the state and so on. So that pre pretty much puts us exactly on time for our typical process of a presentation, discussion, and then ultimately a board resolution. Uh, this is kind of the, the timeline we see in similar districts that have gone through similar referendums using this kind of an approach. I also want to mention there are three other high priority areas that don't show up in the capital plan that we just presented, uh, but I don't want anybody to think that they fell off the radar or they're not important. Um, we believe we can address them through next year's budget EOI, end of year available funds, and or 2019-20-2020-21 general operating budget planning. Uh, that is the second phase of the Warren Middle School Wellness Center, the board approved phase one. Phase two, which couldn't occur until the summer of 2019. Uh, this is the high end estimate. We don't have the final plans yet. The second one, we've talked about elementary school media centers, kind of moving more in the direction of what this facility has become with uh, the flexibility and everything else. We have very high estimates in the capital plan that would have involved knocking down cinder block walls and redesigning. We don't need to do any of that to make the spaces uh, more comfortable and more uh, in tune with what we think the future of those spaces could be, but we're also not ready to finalize what that plan is. The administrative team is working on that right now. We can make that part of the regular budgeting process. And one area we haven't talked about at a public board meeting, but is in the, the long-term capital plan, is the nurse's suite at Central School. Central School is the only building where the nurse does not have any private treatment areas for students. And we have more and more students with individual medical needs where having privacy is essential. There not the ability to do that except by pulling a curtain right now. The nurse's suite at Central School barely meets the state requirement for the amount of square footage in the building. So that is something that we will need to address at some point. But again, based on where the numbers are of those projects, those can be addressed through other means um, besides the capital uh, plan. The other question that came up uh, that is really more for this slide is, what happens if we go out for a referendum and the voters say no? So there's really two options if that happens. The first is we revert to a pay-as-you-go plan. So we were already, that's already one of the options. It would cost the taxpayers more to do the same amount of work, as Mrs. Lenhardt explained. But we would still be able to, if we knew in January of 2019 that the referendum failed, we could still go out to bid using just our capital reserve and begin work in the summer of 2019. That's one option. The second option is to look at the referendum, take feedback from the public, and go back out again. Obviously, if we did that, it would take time to go through the whole process, and that's more time of the project not getting underway, and as time goes by, the project costs continue to rise, so we would lose potentially six months or a year of project work. So with that, uh, we'll go back to our seats and, and entertain questions and discussion.